Hey guys, today, I'll show you an American teen slasher film called Fear Street Part 2, 1978. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. In the last episode, the police officer handed a note to Berman, who survived the curse. One night, Dima and Josh come to her house for help. They want her to help lift the curse on Sam, Dima's girlfriend who is now possessed and tied in the boot of the car. Berman doesn't want any trouble, so she is reluctant to help them, and ask them to leave initially, but her heart is softened when Dina begs her. Berman allows them inside the house, and tells them the story of the Camp Nightwing Massacre. In 1978, the curse of the witch, Sarah Fear has been spread and shat aside. Berman's schoolmates, who bear grudges against her, accuse her of being possessed by a witch and hang her to a tree. A girl named Sheila begins to burn her with a lighter before camp counselors Nick and Kurt come to stop it. They have to let Berman go for not getting themselves into trouble. Nick asks Berman to let the nurse check her burn out, but Berman does not appreciate his help. In the camp, while everyone is busy preparing for the color war, Berman's sister Cindy and her boyfriend Tommy are cleaning the toilet. Cindy complains about the mosses in the toilet that is so hard to get rid of. Tommy comforts her with a sweet kiss. Suddenly, Cindy realizes something is wrong. There were four of them cleaning the toilet. Now there are only her and Tommy left. Cindy looks everywhere and finds the other two are busy with hormone games in a room. It is embarrassing to run into this, but Cindy still asks them to go back to work. The busy couple won't listen to her for she is soft. Cindy has to shove herself out. She meets Kurt, who tells her that her sister is injured. In the meantime, Berman enters the infirmary, and there is nobody inside. Berman notices a witch's mark on the desk. She is startled when the nurse appears behind her suddenly. Out of curiosity, Berman asks the nurse about the witch's mark. Not long ago, the nurse's daughter killed seven people at that party before she killed herself. People believe she was possessed by a witch, including the nurse. Berman finds the nurse is a bit wired. Just then, Cindy comes into the room. Berman and Cindy have an argument about the future. Cindy wants to take more jobs, so that she can save up for university, while Berman thinks nobody can get out of this town. They both part in a bad mood. Later, when Cindy is sorting things out in the utility room, a shadow flashes past her from behind. Right then, Cindy thinks her boyfriend is pranking her, but she can't find anyone in the room. Suddenly, Tommy appears behind her, and the nurse also enters the room from the other side with a knife in her hand, saying that he will die because his name appears on the wall. The nurse attacks Tommy with a knife, but Tommy stops her in time. During the fight, the nurse is hit and passes out. The police officer thinks the nurse loses her mind because of her daughter. Cindy doesn't know yet her nightmare has just begun. During dinner, everyone is talking about the nurse. They think she is possessed by the witch, while Cindy doesn't agree. Tommy has a different opinion. The camp counselor announces the color war begins tonight. Everyone is excited about it, but Cindy is concerned about the nurse. She tries to find some information from Berman, who is the last person who had contact with the nurse. But Berman thinks she's just finding excuses for her misery. Berman believes the curse is real and Cindy is cursed too. Cindy is disappointed at Berman's apathy. Later, Cindy comes back to Tommy who feels a bit stressed under the weather. She wants to get into the infirmary with Tommy's help. She still believes there is something behind the nurse. Right then, Tommy notices a notebook with a witch's mark on the desk, saying the witch made a deal with the devil. The notebook also says Sarah cut off her wicked hand in exchange for eternal life and brought darkness upon the land. Suddenly, Tommy hears something in the room. He goes up and checks. It's the busy couple who cleaned the toilet with them earlier. Short hair jokes about the note and finds a map in the notebook. They think the map leads to the witch's house where there must be lots of treasure, so they decide to find it. On their way, the girl's short hair finds a pit. They believe the nurse dug these places to look for the witch's hand, which she believes can lift the curse. Cindy tries to get the pills she found in the infirmary back, which is being held by short hair. Just then, curly hair finds the entrance to the witch's house, so they enter the narrow entrance one by one. At the end of the tunnel, they find a witch's altar. According to the notebook, this is where the witch put a curse on the town. They also find the names of all the Shadowside killers carved on the wall. To their surprise, Tommy's name is there too. Short hair has a very bad vibe about it. Unfortunately, Tommy is now possessed. Cindy and Short hair happen to see Tommy killing curly hair with an axe. They run away for life as fast as they can. They then hide in a narrow passage. Luckily, Tommy doesn't follow them. Instead, he heads to the camp, where people are enjoying the color war. 
Cindy realizes those people are in great danger. She needs to get out as soon as possible. Her sister is also in the camp. However, Shore Hair is mourning her boyfriend's death. She thinks everyone is going to die because of the curse. Cindy has no choice but to look for a way out by herself. In the dark, however, she hears someone behind her. She turns around and sees Short Hair. She thinks Short Hair is following her. But Short Hair tells her that she is looking for the exit, and every time she will end up returning to the same place. Cindy notices the mark on the notebook. She believes the mark can show them the way out. Meanwhile, in the camp, nobody is aware of the danger. People are making fun of the boy Chubby. Chubby sees Tommy standing in front of him with a weapon in his hand. He thinks Tommy is going to bully him too. However, Chubby is hacked to death by Tommy. In the next scene, Sheila, who bullied Berman before, is led to the toilet. Nick plays a prank on her to help Berman get revenge. Berman and Nick run off the toilet, laughing, leaving Sheila locked in the smelly toilet. Later, Berman and Nick have a hormone chat. Both of them come from bad families. They feel pity for each other and can't help Tom massaging. Suddenly, a scream interrupts them. It turns out people have discovered Chubby. The whole camp is in a big chaos. Meanwhile, in the witch's house, Short Hair and Cindy are still finding their way. Short Hair asks if Cindy would kill Tommy. Cindy says she can't do it because she loves him. Suddenly, a strange sound draws their attention. They follow the sound and realize it is the sound from the flies. The flies are flying over a cluster of organs on the ground, and it is beating like a heart. Short Hair touches it and has flashbacks of all the previous killers. She removes her hand and sees Cindy as one of the killers. Scared, she runs without looking and injures her leg. The pain brings her to her senses, and she knows that it was just a vision. Cindy helps treat her wound. Short Hair feels grateful and understands what Cindy is trying to do. They are all cursed by the witch. They need to help each other. Suddenly, Cindy notices the moss on the wall is the same as the one she saw in the toilet, which means they are close to the camp. In the meantime, Tommy keeps killing the camp, including a girl who just had sex with her boyfriend. Nick gathers the rest of the people in a safe house. He promises Berman he's going to find her sister. Berman remembers Sheila is still locked in the smelly toilet, so she runs to the toilet but doesn't find her there. However, an angry Sheila attacks her from behind. While they are fighting, Cindy and Short Hair come to the toilet following the mosses. A while later, after knocking Sheila unconscious, Berman hears her sisters cry and helps them out. However, at the same time, more people are being killed by Tommy. Nick then finds a dead body. The horrific scene makes him throw up. While Berman is pulling Short Hair up, Tommy approaches them and kills Sheila in an instant. Berman is scared and runs away, leaving Cindy behind. Berman hides with Nick in a house. They don't expect Tommy would follow them there. They carefully hide from Tommy until a snake exposes them. Tommy captures Berman. When he's about to kill her, Nick blocks the knife for her and gets injured. Berman takes her chance and escape. On the other side, Short Hair and Cindy study the notebook. They find out there is another way leading to the restaurant which was the meeting house where the witch cut off her hand. If they can find the hand there, they will be able to lift the curse. Cindy doesn't waste any time to get there. When she arrives, the exit is blocked. Berman happens to hide in the restaurant. Berman turns on the radio to make some noises so she doesn't hear her sisters cry. Tommy follows Berman and breaks the door with the weapon. Cindy tries to kick the fence open. Berman wants to attack Tommy from behind. However, the music stops before she can do it. Tommy turns around. Berman stabs him in the chest, but it seems it doesn't hurt him at all. During the fight, Berman grabs a sack and puts it over his head. However, Berman falls over when she runs. Luckily, Cindy stabs Tommy in his back and kills him before he kills Berman. The two sisters cry for joy and embrace each other. Short Hair finds them later and brings a piece of good news that she has found the witchy's hand. The lost hand has always been on Satan's stone, which is the black stone in the smelly toilet. According to the note, as long as the hand and the body unite together, the curse will be lifted in an instant. Since they have got the hand, what they need to do now is to find the witch's body. The witch was hanged by a tree, so she should still be buried by the hanging tree. Right then, for some reason, Berman's nose starts to bleed, and the blood drops on the hand bone. Berman sees a vision of the witch. They bring the tools they need and head to the tree. However, they don't expect the curse brings Tommy back to life. Tommy kills Short Hair, which angers Cindy a lot. She then decapitates him with a shovel. The curse also revives other killers. The sisters run to the tree and start to dig the witch's body up before the killers reach them. They find a stone saying, the witch forever lives. 
but it appears that the witch's body is not buried by the tree. Cindy asks Berman to leave, and she stays to fight the killers. Unfortunately, neither of them escapes. The killers disappear when the sisters die. Nick finds them and brings Berman back to life via CPR. But Cindy can't make it. The curse will last because they didn't find the witch's body. After hearing the story, Dina tells Berman that they found the witch's body when they went across the forest. That's why they were hunted by the killers. They found something the witch didn't want them to find. Now they can end the curse by putting the hand back to the body. Soon after, Dina and Josh dig out the witch's hand from under the tree and take it to the place where they found the body. Dina puts the hand on the body and finds herself back in the past with a knife in her hand. From the reflection in the water, Dina sees that she is now the witch, Sarah Fear. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.